Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am casing the Spellbinders April 2024 Club Kits. Case stands for copy and share, but it can also stand for clean and simple. So in today's video, I'll be sharing two cards, one that I'm copying and sharing, and my second card will be a clean and simple card. I think this will be a new series that I start up. I chose to start with the Spellbinders Club Kids, but in actuality, I'm starting this series so that I can maybe use some of the other craft kits that I've purchased and have not yet crafted with. I don't think I can flip those videos in the same way I flipped the Spellbinders Club Kids, so I'm hoping that creating this series, I'll be able to actually get to crafting with some of those and have the time to just have a play with them. So for my uh, copy and share card, the card I'm copying is from Call Me Crafty Owl here on YouTube and she made this card during a live stream. In fact, uh, we just filmed the live stream earlier today and I really love her card. So when I saw it, I thought, that's a card I really want to be my first copy and share. So thank you, Alicia, for the inspiration. And so as I was watching Alicia do this, I was very mesmerized by her stamping out this pattern. And she used some gorgeous colors that her community chose. I think she gave the option of three, maybe four different color cube cards, um, palettes, color palettes that they could choose from. And uh, she went with the uh, majority vote on that. I'm going to change up my color palette quite a lot by making it more or less monochromatic. And as well, I'm actually going to change how I create the tiled background of hearts. So I'm using the same stamp set that Alicia used, which is the clear stamp and die of the month from Spellbinders. And what I've done is die cut a boatload. I think it's 30 some odd hearts that I have here. Because with the clear stamp of the month, you do have the option to get it by itself, but you can also get it with the coordinating dies. So if you have coordinating dies with any stamp, this is one way if you need to do a lot of repeat stamping to actually line that up. And that is to, you can stamp one uh, version out initially, create yourself this little jig by die cutting through the center of, I recommend some heavyweight cardstock. So this is 120 pound. And then you can just line up your stamp so that it will land perfectly in the middle of that aperture. And that way you can just fit your die cut in there and then stamp away. So I I got into the groove of this where I was inking my stamp with my left hand and then in my right hand, I was removing die cuts and placing new ones in. So I got really fast at this, but I do think ultimately Alicia's method, and if you want to see it, um, just head on over to my Crafty Fun with Friends. It's episode 53, and I have a podcast, um, which is sort of like a playlist of all of my Crafty Fun episodes. And so um, I think ultimately the way that I am recreating Alicia's card is uh it takes a lot longer than what Alicia did because I had to die cut all of my hearts. Then I had to stamp all of my hearts and now I have to position all of my hearts. So the method that Alicia uh, shared with us on the live stream, she was stamping and positioning as she was going and she didn't need to do any die cutting. So ultimately it was a lot faster. And one of the things that I like to always point out is that there are so many methods and approaches to achieving the same or similar look. So you should, if you see something that you like, you should always feel free to kind of figure out what works best for you. Maybe you like die cutting. Maybe you like the extra texture that having these die cuts across the page gives you because it, it's a slightly different look. 
to having something stamped directly on a on a panel. So it's all it's all a matter of preference and all a matter of what what you prefer. And so what I'm gonna do is I really just want to get this first column of hearts spaced. Um, and that way, if I get those started right, <laughs> then the rest will be a breeze. And so what I did was I positioned my bottommost and my topmost heart first, trying to line it up so that they have the same amount of border um, or margin from the outer edge of the die cut to the outer edge of the card panel here. And once I had the bottom and the top set, then I was able to space the two rows in between. And when you have one row, you know, one column started, then the rest of the row becomes a lot easier. I'm using my T-square so I can really make sure that everything is actually straight across and that I don't end up with a diagonal line by the time I get over to the other edge of this panel. What I love about Alicia's card is that she did run the stamping like clear off the edge of her panel and that gives a really nice illusion that this was a larger pattern that has been cut down. So Here's the thing I did not notice, though, when I was watching Alicia make this, and I didn't really pick it up um, as to why she made some of the choices she did with regards to her mats and layers, and now I understand. It's at this point that I understood why it is that Alicia has the scalloped panel on the bottom as a matte layer and on top her stamped pattern and all of that was on a rectangular panel and the reason why because I didn't watch Alicia um, closely to see how she attached her vellum but my suspicion and from what I can see of the card because she hasn't shared her card I just took a screenshot of the live screen but what I suspect is that she wrapped her vellum around the panel and glued it to the back. I can't do that. My panel has a scalloped border edge. <laughs> you cannot wrap vellum around a scalloped border. And so I already had to run my panel through my die cutting machine a second time to cut off the hearts that I hung off of the edge of that panel, which if it were a rectangular panel, I could have just used my scissors and snipped them right off very easily. And But because I didn't use a rectangular panel or anything that had a straight edge, I did have to rely on my die cutting machine which I'll have to rely on for this bit of vellum as well. So I stamped out the sentiment, happy we are friends with stays on ink. Stays on is great for non-porous surfaces, so it's good for vellum. And here's the other thing, because Alicia was able to wrap her vellum around, she had a way to glue it down. But look, I all I have is this one pink little heart that I know I want to glue down on top and otherwise there's nowhere to glue this down because I have to cut those edges off. Well, I don't have to, but I I feel like I should in order to, for this to look the way I, I would like it to look. So I kind of have to cut the scalloped edges off of this vellum in order to get it to match up at the um, outer edges of this panel. But gluing it down just on the one side where that pink heart is doesn't feel like it's going to be secure enough. So plan B is going to be to actually stamp out my the big word happy and I'm actually going to stamp it onto some plain white cardstock. And thankfully, there is actually a coordinating die that goes with this word. Now, a lot of the clear stamp and dies of the month, you'll get 
coordinating dyes for all of the words and sentiments, but this one's kind of sentiment heavy. So there's only actually coordinating dyes for some of the bigger or, and the multi-line sentiments. So thank goodness this set actually has a coordinating die to go with the word happy because I was able to stamp it out of um, onto white cardstock, die cut it out, and now I have a place to hide my glue and I can actually adhere this down to my panel uh, in a more secure fashion than just that one little heart. <laughs> so... I was able to kind of recover, but it's one of these things where once you start copying somebody's card, you don't have the benefit of all of the thinking and reasoning that went into how they created their card until you're kind of in the in the midst of it. So uh, well done, Alicia. I can now see why you made some of the design choices that you did. But I'm happy with um, where this ultimately landed because it was kind of hard to read the word happy against my gray hearts, especially since I am choosing not to use the embroidery floss uh, skeins that Alicia had on her card. She used the stencil of the month to create those. And for one, I don't want to do the fussy cutting that Alicia did. And second, I, I really like using some of this month's club kits for non sort of needle crafting um, themed cards. Now there's gonna still be a little bit of that theme going on here because you've got the stitch lines and the word happy, you have the cross stitch heart, but it's not so overly thematic um, that, you know, wouldn't necessarily just look like, I mean, this could just look like a stylistic choice, not specifically about sewing or needle crafting. So that's my uh, copy and share card. And now let's make a clean and simple card. This card's going to go a lot faster. So what I'm starting off with is actually a die set from Pink and Main. If you saw my little mini haul from scrapbook.com, you might have seen how excited I was to purchase this. And I'm very, very excited to use it. I've still got my eyes on some of the other shapes and sizes. And I'm just looking for a sale, whether Pink and Main has it on sale or if uh, Mama Elephant puts theirs on sale. So folks, if you see it, let me know. <laughs> I'm, you can find me on uh, all of the socials. So just DM me or, um, or, you know, send me a little message. But I am starting off with, this is the smaller of the two rectangles. And the way that this die works is you use the same die to die cut twice out of two different colors. And then you do get the coordinating layer to go on top of this. And so for each of those uh, two sizes of scalloped edged rectangles, you do get the a stitched edge rectangle to layer on top. And the end effect is you get this alternating color pattern in your scallops. So fun. It, it looks so cool. And so I'm going to start my card off with this panel as my kind of centerpiece. I don't know that necessarily this card qualifies as um, a strictly clean and simple card. I'm not sure if you're allowed to have a large element like this on a clean and simple card, but this is about as clean and simple as I get because <laughs> I struggle with leaving the amount of white space that, that I managed to leave on this card. And that's one of the reasons why I want to start up this series is because clean and simple is just very, very hard for me to do. I always, I have a preference for interactive cards, pop-up cards, cards that move and shake and make noise. And so something clean and simple is a real challenge. And I think just by doing it more, I'll get more used to it. 
So here is a final close-up look at both of the cards that I have created. This one features the pink and main layered scallop die set um, in the rectangular shape and as well it features the Spellbinders small die of the month. That's where the word thanks comes from and I love that die. It's got that really nice stitched detailing in the center. Here is my copy and share card. I copied Call Me Crafty Owl's card that she made during my Crafty Fun with Friends episode 53 live stream. So if you'd like to see her original card and how she made it, you can check that out in my Crafty Fun with Friends podcast. Thanks so much and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!